Eddie Van der Velt joins us from the Markets Live team. Eddie, good morning to you. So let's get back to the China theme, I suppose, uh, because that flirting with deflation line yeah. has in the past had global resonance and relevance, Absolutely. does it now? Yeah, and uh, look, China flirting with deflation is definitely the big story, particularly because China is still the factory for the world, and it is an exporter um, of inflation. But what really caught my eye is not that PPI number, not the factory gate number, it's the core inflation number, because that started coming down uh, coming down which is not something that we've seen in the rest of the world and of course that will all of this will uh, you know push for more stimulus for, for Beijing which has really been a very very piecemeal now it's tempting to think that where China leads us the rest of the world will follow but it's not at all clear that that is the case because you know when you see uh, supply chain disruption you see these shocks coming through the economy you don't see necessarily that uh, th that it stays there what happens is it feeds through into wages and when it hits wages that's when it becomes sticky mm. well on the question of wages do you have any more clarity as we loop back to the numbers that came out of the US on the jobs front we had the yeah. shock ADP number then the non-farm payrolls 2009 209,000 so below the estimates what is what, what is your estimate now your expectation as to how the jobs market in the US unfolds. How much clarity do we have about the progression? Yeah, Tom, it was a very confusing picture that we had last week, right? We had the ADP numbers faking to the upside and then we, we got the, uh, the non-farm payrolls coming in lower really than many people had expected. Um, but the jobs market overall in the US still looks quite strong. Uh, and, and we saw that particularly in the wage inflation, which is still very strong, right? And I think that as long as that is the case, that the, the, the Fed will continue to push for hikes because wages, like I said, is where it becomes sticky. And I think the Fed, therefore, and where the markets are still pricing in uh, a hike in, ju in July. Yes, and it seemed to be that focus on wages out of all of that data on Friday that, that, that spooked equity markets a little bit. So uh, they, they, they certainly were concerned about that, as you point out, Eddie. Let's pivot to the UK, another part of the world where we're concerned about tight labour markets, although some really interesting news out of KPMG and REC uh, just overnight suggests that actually we are seeing a a little bit of cooling, but actually house prices, part of the ongoing conversation here in yeah. the UK, and that's going to be crucial, isn't it, in terms of how those assets hold up and how that plays into the UK conversation. C certainly interesting conversations. I've had several over the weekend, you know, with people talking about number one, house prices, and number two, their mortgage rates, because we're seeing those, uh, you know, two-year yields significantly above even the trust era highs, uh, and, and that's starting to bite for a lot of people. And I think, you know, the UK remains an outlier because, you know, the UK is still it had that double whammy, both from uh, from the COVID and, and also from Brexit. And mm. I think for those reasons, the UK remains an outlier. Now, whether it is a, it, whether the Bank of England is able to bring it down as quickly as the rest of the world, we will have to wait and see. At the moment, it doesn't look like it. It's, it's pretty tricky in the UK. Yeah. Situation still still very changeable.